With three-foot exterior walls of coarse limestone, the Ice House at 203 Southeast Green Street is a unique example of utilitarian commercial architecture from the late 19th century in Lee's Summit. Designed by local architects A.J. Hess and Sons, this 1896 structure is the only example of their work that remains in the community. The 3,700 square foot building was built to serve as a packing house for an adjacent slaughterhouse. By the 1920s, it had been converted to the Community Ice Company. In later years, it served as an automobile garage, thrift store, and most recently, a fine antiques auction house called Ice House Auctions. Over the last 30 years, maintenance at the Ice House has been lacking, but what really endangers this property are plans for a new downtown city market by the city of Leeds Summit. And this is the very location of the Ice House that could be demolished if no one volunteers to take over the building. The city asked the selected developer for a quote to rehabilitate the ice house and was given estimates between 1.7 and 3.5 million. However, preservation specialists have identified that the building is eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places and thus eligible to use both state and federal historic tax credits to help finance the rehabilitation. Since the building's nomination, the City of Lee Summit has voted to demolish the structure and incorporate its historic fabric into the new development. Lee's Summit has gained national recognition for their historic downtown, and it is hoped that the attention garnered by a Places in Peril listing will make them think again and honor their preservation legacy by saving this historic building. This house at 1003 Locust Street in Chillicothe, Missouri was built around 1891 by a Dr. W. W. Edgerton for his wife Elizabeth and daughter Ethel. Edgerton is locally significant to Livingston County and Chillicothe for his successful business endeavors and his contributions to our community as a mayor. The home stayed in the Edgerton Welsh family for the better part of a century, finally changing hands in 1963. The beautiful features of this home have always held our interest, but a lack of knowledge on repairs and restoration have forced previous owners and enthusiasts away, closing her doors to any family since 2013. The home has been vacant ever since. If you look beyond the board covering the front door and the vines encroaching the southern side, you'll discover cedar shaker on the dormers and many of the original Victorian details present, both inside and out. The LCPS bought the property in August of 2021. Since that time, we've campaigned and raised capital for a new roof that was just installed. Our next goals are to repair the sagging west and south porches. The siding also needs to be removed and repaired, and then it's on to a beautiful new paint job on the exterior to highlight the intricate gingerbread trim. Our future projects include new plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. A new kitchen and several bathrooms will also be added, but most of the original floor plan will remain the same. The LCPS will offer workshops to help current homeowners take care of their properties. We want to be proactive in our community and keep other homes from falling into disrepair the way this one has. The LCPS plans to retain ownership of the home after restoration to rent it as a vacation property, but we will also give tours to schools and historical groups. This renovated home will offer the chance to share the local history of the families that lived here and the businesses they ran, as well as early Chillicothe history. Both ventures serve to educate and further fund the vision of the LCPS in Chillicothe, Missouri. All that remains of the original John Gu homestead at 115 Main Street is a small smokehouse. It was built in 1830 and utilized by the family until the 1940s. The smokehouse features individually set stone walls, an arched brick ceiling, and the original latches and hinges that were forged by the Gu family. Meat hooks still hang from a smoky beam where hams were once hung to cure. This smokehouse currently holds the title as the oldest building in St. Peter's and represents a time long before the community's incorporation in 1910. 
The current owner of the property has held on to the smokehouse for more than two years, promising the real estate agent at the time of purchase that he would not demolish this piece of history and instead allow concerned parties to move it to a safe location. A looming concern is the structure's close proximity to the neighboring home, which needs extensive work done that cannot be completed with the smokehouse mere inches away. A historical focus group created by the City of St. Peter's would like to see the smokehouse moved to a new location, a feat the city has already achieved with the historic log cabin. It is hoped that listing the old smokehouse in St. Peter's as a place in peril will assist efforts to raise funds for this project and also find assistance from professional masons or building movers to secure a future for this historic structure. Those who wish to aid the City of St. Peter's can contact City Historian and Alderman Joyce Townsend at alderman.townsend at stpetersmo.net. While the streetcar has done much for revitalization efforts along Main Street in Kansas City, the extension of the line beyond Union Station to 51st Street raises new concerns for historic structures along the line. Many of the commercial buildings along this stretch of Main Street date between 1880 and 1930, a period when Main Street was developing as the primary corridor between the downtown and residential neighborhoods to the south. The buildings are primarily between one and four stories tall, with flat or low-pitched roofs representing a variety of styles from Romanesque Revival to Art Deco. Development of the second leg of the Kansas City streetcar has spurred a wave of speculative commercial real estate purchased along this stretch of Main Street. Many historic buildings have already been demolished, and many of those that remain are not listed in a National Register district and therefore lack the protection of Historic Preservation Review. Unlike the primarily successful redevelopment seen along the initial stretch of the streetcar, the buildings along this second leg are seen as less desirable as they lack density and height. A number of buildings are eligible for National Register listing, and some are currently in the process to be listed on the local Historic Register to pause demolition. It is hoped that listing these low to mid-rise commercial buildings along the new Kansas City streetcar as places in peril will bring widespread awareness to the ongoing threat of demolition and inappropriate redevelopment along this stretch of Main Street and encourage building owners to find ways to incorporate these important resources into their plans as they seek to redevelop Main Street in the coming months and years. Joplin's Carnegie Library is one of the earliest libraries in Missouri to be funded by the eminent philanthropist. The library movement in Joplin began as early as the 1890s, but it wasn't until citizens voted in favor of public funding for a library in 1901 that Carnegie was contacted and $40,000 was secured for the building's construction. Prominent regional architect August Michaelis was selected to design the two-story neoclassical revival-style structure which he chose to build with marble from nearby Carthage, Missouri. In 1916, a two-story addition was built and a skylight added above the main desk. By the 1960s, a structural analysis determined that the second floor was not capable of supporting the weight of books. In 1981, a new library was opened. The contents of the Carnegie Building were auctioned off and the building was sold. Over the last 30 years, the building has suffered from severe neglect and vandalism. A spring 2022 report indicated that issues were relatively minimal for a 120-year-old building, giving hope to those advocating for its rehabilitation and leading to a promising negotiation between the owner and a local nonprofit. However, in June 2022, a fire broke out in the basement, resulting in severe damage. The Joplin Carnegie Library is now more endangered than ever, and it is hoped that listing the building as a place in peril will aid local efforts to find a viable solution to save this historic library. Located in St. Joseph's Patey Town National Register Historic District, the R.L. McDonald Manufacturing Company Warehouse at 1122 Penn Street stands as a reminder of the community's successful industrial past. 
The R.L. McDonald Manufacturing Company built the warehouse in 1899 to house their expanding manufacturing and distribution needs. It was in use until the company ceased operations in 1957. Most recently, the building served as the Penn Street Antique Mall, but it has since been vacant for almost 20 years. Like most vacant structures, it shows signs of neglect. The roof leaks and the brick needs repointing. However, there is no profound structural instability. The looming threat for the R.L. McDonald Manufacturing Company warehouse is the building's owner and the neighboring Patey House Museum. A demolition permit was submitted to the city as the owner wishes to sell the structural components and sell the lot to the museum for parking. While the demolition permit was delayed, the clock is still ticking for the fate of this historic structure. It is hoped that listing the R.L. McDonald Manufacturing Company warehouse as a place in peril will raise public awareness for the building and potentially secure an interested buyer, as well as raise general awareness for the importance of St. Joseph's historic building inventory. When Southeast Missouri farmers began planting cotton in the 1920s, many African-American families seeking jobs moved north. Those that settled in Sykeston were soon segregated into an area known as Sunset Edition. By 1941, the city realized Sunset Edition needed a larger school to meet the needs of a growing population. Architectural firm William B. Itner Inc. of St. Louis was selected to design the new school. The first portion of the project was completed in 1948 and included eight classrooms, but the student body quickly outgrew the space, with as many as 80 students being taught in one room. The school board voted for an addition in 1952, adding two more classrooms and a gymnasium that doubled as a cafeteria. By 1968, the Sykeston School District finalized integration and remaining students were enrolled elsewhere in the district. The district continued to use the building to house an adult vocational program, and some areas of the building, like the gymnasium, were used for community purposes. Now vacant, the building suffers from neglect. Windows have been broken and the interior needs major updates and repairs if it is to find a new use. The city of Sykeston is actively pushing to demolish the structure due to public safety concerns, but the owner is supportive of the building's preservation. Efforts to save the school are spearheaded by the African Scientific Research Institute, a group dedicated to saving places that highlight the African-American experience in America. Greetings all, my name is Asia Mohammed and I am one of the members of ASRI. So as a high school intern with ASRI, archeological investigation team, um, we are basically trying to uncover the backstories in the turbulent era of the great migratory movement surrounding basically the peopling of the Southeast Missouri Delta region. And we have two goals for that. So these goals are basically to establish Lincoln Junior High School as a major historic tourist attraction. Secondly, we also seek to basically provide public transparency by engaging in the citizenry and a public discourse by focusing um, on preserving historical structures and economic development opportunities surrounding these historic sites. Basically, ASRI's intentions are to breathe life back into these rural areas by establishing like a unique, critical, historic tourist destination of Lincoln High School that will basically tell the untold stories of early black residents here and agriculturalists whose contributions were to help make the Midwest the bread maker of America. Hello everyone, my name is Riley Price and I'm the Executive Director of Missouri Preservation. Missouri Preservation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to advocating for, educating about, and assisting with the preservation of Missouri's unique architectural heritage. The Places in Peril program began in 2000 as Missouri's most endangered historic places. It has since blossomed into a much larger media campaign thanks to all of the wonderful ways we can now consume media, including this video. I'd like to thank all of the nominators, volunteers, and groups behind these Places in Peril who helped contribute to this announcement. I would also like to thank Missouri Preservation's corporate partners for making this program possible. Marvin, Mangrove, and Rosen Preservation. Last and certainly not least, I would like to thank all of our members of Missouri Preservation. We would not exist without our partners and members. 
Your support is what makes our programs and saving these endangered historic places possible. Visit our website, preservemo.org, to learn more about places in peril, including previous listings that still need your help. You can also find more information on other programs of Missouri Preservation, how to get involved, and how to become a member.